Hello, this demo will cover working with components in SOLIDWORKS. So you have some choices right off the bat, whether you want to work with the components within a part file or an assembly. So a part file is my preferred method uh, when designing, um, but it will definitely depend on the team you're working with and the ultimate end goal. Um, so if you're working with a larger team or working towards production, an assembly is more typical. Um, for this class, I would recommend working within a part file, but it's ultimately up to you. Um, we can talk about recommendations in a bit. So once you choose your path, uh, there's further choices within the part file in terms of the files that I have uh, provided to you. So you can choose a prearranged setup. This is a part file with just um, dumb bodies inside of it. Dumb meaning there's no live tree. They're not editable. They're just literally the parts and you can make a master sketch around it and just build around the components. Just make sure you don't accidentally merge um, your newly constructed appliance bodies into the existing components. This is easy in a way because I have it provided for you. It's hard in a way because you're kind of fixed to the setup that is provided. Um, but you can always tweak some of the positions with like the move body command. Um, if you go the part file route, you can create your own setup. So if you don't like the setup that I have, you can make your own by basically arranging parts in an assembly. And then it seems kind of weird, but you would save the assembly out as a part file. And what that does is it kind of locks in the components in their place. And that's how it kind of creates um, what I'm referring to as dumb bodies that have no tree for editing. Um, it, it makes for like a lighter file. Um, and then you can work around your own setup. If you go the assembly route, which um, I think everyone will have to do to bring in their uh, Project 3 appliance, you would start by placing your appliance into an assembly and then adding the in individual components. Um, and I recommend everyone start this way and maybe use that created assembly to save it out as a part file to then try this other method of working within the part file. Um, but ultimately, it really is up to you. The requirements, however, are having a minimum set number of like internal components for the function of each appliance. So if you're going with the Bluetooth speaker, of course, I would expect there to be a speaker, uh, some kind of PCB, uh, in this case, like a Bluetooth card, uh, a LiPo battery, and then a way to charge the battery. The toasters should have this like main toaster functioning um, collection of solenoids and thermometers and stuff. Um, it should have heating elements. I would assume there would be like two and then of course a rack for the food. So that's the bare minimum. And then a power cord, which can just be a swept um, circle. Uh, blenders, I would expect there to be a motor. I would expect there to be a blade and then a swept circle for a power cord to represent the power cord. Um, and these are the internal components. Of course, I would expect there to be functional components to all of these like buttons um, that are visible on the outside and don't necessarily need to have a corresponding inside. Um, so yeah. Again, my recommendation is to try both methods. So, and I'll go through this right now, but you know, saving a copy of your P3 appliance, dropping it in an assembly, adding the individual components, editing the appliance to fit the components. So that means changing proportion and then shelling the bodies so that they're hollow. Um, saving that assembly, because you'll need that for the project, but then suppressing the appliance and saving the assembly as a part file. And that's what will give you your own arranged setup. So that's what I would recommend that you do. Um, if you are working with components that I have not provided or prearranged, you can follow this demo. Um, this is for camera components, but it, it, it's just kind of a guide of how to work with things off GrabCAD. It shows you the back end of how I created like some of these arrangements and these files, uh, these individual parts. So that's kind of like if you want to go the full custom route. You don't, this demo is optional, um, but you may find it helpful um, in terms of like how th this might represent, like if you're working with an engineer and they just give you like a step file, how do you go from step file to SolidWorks? I'm saving you all a bit of time by arr like arranging some of these, but if you're curious, I definitely recommend uh, at least watching this video and going through these steps. Okay, so that said, let me show the components that we have here. So on, um, box, the individual components um, are ones that I have already placed into SOLIDWORKS, um, but they are 
So for example, this is just like the speaker PC board. This is just the toaster collection of functional elements. This is simply just a speaker. This is, you know, it's all as described. Um, and so these you can place into an assembly uh, to arrange for yourself. Under uh, raw components, this is the folder I don't think you'll need, but this is all literally what I grabbed from GrabCAD. If you wanna follow the demo of like setting it up from custom and follow along step-by-step step and do it yourself, you'll need these components here. Um, the camera and the USB type C port and the three seven volt LiPo battery. Um, so that, that's where those are. Um, here are the arranged components. So here it's like blender, speaker, toaster. They're all in part files. These are kind of like plug and play. You can open one up and literally just start building an appliance around it. Um, so that saves you a couple steps, but again, then you're fixed into the arrangement provided. Um, you can do some minor tweaks with move body commands. And then the final folder is this reference appliances. So these are the appliances that are completely built. I can actually start to show some of these. So like here, this is the reference blender. This is just so you can see where the components go, how it's arranged and kind of mimic it. This is what was already uploaded when we were working in project three. Here is the prearranged setup of the blender. So everything is kind of fixed in place. Um, and you know the process here would be starting with a master sketch probably from like an elevation view, um, you know, so like this front view and then drawing out the shape of the blender and, and, and building around it. Um, then the individual components, right, it, it's just the motor. So you would need to arrange this. Now, the, the positive thing here is you can see, you know, this is a lot lighter. So depending on your machine, the individual components might be friendlier to work with. Um, some of these other prearranged components like the blender, that's a lot of bodies here at 112. Uh, so, I mean, you can open them up and play and like decide for yourself what makes sense for what you need to do. Um, all right, so that said, I'm just gonna get into what this process might look like. So here's my blender from project three. I did create an assembly for it because I added in a handle and this like Lego gear knob. Uh, but let's pretend it's a part file because I think that's what most of you had. So I'm going to go to File New and create an assembly. So I'm essentially going through these steps down here. And again, because of the nature of Project 3 and using our, you know, repurposing a file we already made, we have to start the assembly route. Um, but I think we can start on this route, use this as a path to create your own setup. And so you can try both and see which one you prefer in the long run. So here is my new assembly. I'm gonna just drop in my blender. So this is like the equivalent of you dropping in your file. Um, the first image, the first object you place in an assembly is fixed, so it won't move. Um, now the next, so let's see, to start with, I'm just gonna right click on this and say, tell it to be transparent. And now I'm gonna to start to just place in some components. So I'm gonna say insert component, I'm going to click on this pin to keep it visible because I want to put in the blade and I want to put in the simple motor. And so now I'm going to take, uh, let's see, I'm going to use sort of these views to place these roughly in the right place. Now I base this off of um, some different components. So I have I have more room than I need. I'm assuming the issue for most is gonna be the opposite. Most of you are going to need um, to create more room. I just think it's a design tendency to make things smaller than they actually need to be just because often smaller things look better. Um, but yeah, and I mean, you don't really need to mate these. Like things that I might do is like, I would mate the two right planes of these because I really wanna align these two components. Um, and then I would mate the front planes of them so that they're just centered on each other. Maybe a quicker way would have been selecting both of these um, cylinders and making them concentric to each other. And really what I'm looking to do is just place them like roughly in the center of this. I, 
yeah, I think you can get away without mating, but I would recommend it. Um, so I just want everything to be centered within this blender. So I'm going to mate the, the front planes here. I'm ignoring the top planes because I can, that way I can still adjust the height. So here I'm going to do the right plane with the overall right plane. And now we have this, um, all of this componentry perfectly centered in here. Now, because I have a lot of room, really the proportion that I could tweak would, would possibly be like, um, the height. So I could, I could make it a little bit more compact. Uh, but I also want to um, shell this out. So at this point, what I would probably do is I would actually edit the main um, body here. So I can edit this within the assembly. I, I can right click on this and say edit part. Uh, that's right. I need to save this first. So I'm going to style save as. Now I should be able to right click on this and say edit part. Now, what I forgot to mention is really you should be saving a copy of this. So before I edit this, I'm actually going to open the part up. And while it, the assembly is open, I'm going to save a copy of it. So file save as. And because I'm saving it while the, so here I'm going to rename it P4. Because I'm saving a copy of it while the assembly is open, you can see the name changed here. If I go back to um, the Blender assembly, here you can see the name updated. So now I can edit this if there is a mistake or if I, if I make a mistake, I can always reload the other one. So saving a copy is a key step. So I right click on this and I say edit. Now editing within an assembly can be kind of problematic. There's a tendency to, well, firstly, it can make your machine run slower because it has all of all of these different parts is pointing to. I find that if the parts are, um, if the components are within the part, it works a bit quicker. Um, but also there's a tendency, there's a, there's a chance to like, there, it just adds another level of complexity because now we're in like component world or part world rather. Um, this is in blue. Sometimes if you're not in part world, you can start making sketches and stuff. Right, so here's a sketch, but I'm not in the part, and so this is going to lead to problems, and and this is the main. Uh, again, this is what is problematic on working within parts within assembly because it just adds another layer of complexity. Um, you can always open the part and edit it here, and avoid any of those possible mistakes. But the problem here is you can't see the components, so that's the that's the trade-off. Um, of course, when you are working. Um, with parts or with components that are in the part. So if I have like what I'm referring to as the dumb bodies here, I can then see them, I can work in here and I can avoid all those challenges or potential errors. Um, but yeah, for now I'm gonna, so I'm gonna right click on this and say edit part. Again, I'm doing this so that I can see the components here. I can try and work with my master sketch here. So I can edit this and see like, can I bring this number down? exit the sketch and see what happens. All right, so this got smaller, that's good. Maybe that's too small. The only error is a missing fillet. Looks like the handle is a bit misaligned now. Um, this is again where it like makes sense to um, where you place the origin is important. So in retrospect, for the blender, it would have made sense to place the origin here where the, the pitcher meets the base so that I can shrink the base without moving the pitcher and creating issues here with my handle. Um, but yeah, so like as far as like other edits goes, I, you know, I can right click on this and I can say, um, I can look for isolate, it's right here. Um, so again, this is the difference between working within an assembly and within a part. Typically in a part, it would isolate just the body. And I would do that so that I could shell it 
because right now this is all solid. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back into the part file here and right click on this and say isolate. And here's what I mean by shelling it. So I can just load the shell command, click down here. We can also see that some of these I think are problematic um, with that movement. I guess let's leave it for now. I'm just going to shell the bottom face. Whatever face you select for the shell is going to make is going to become hollow. Um, and this is obviously what we want for components. This I can change this depth. This looks like it ended up being too deep to me, so I can find the command that creates this. I can right click on it and say edit make it like maybe a half inch deep instead let's see if I can find um, these commands and just move them down I change that spacing and here let's just get them further down And here's where like this bottom shell command, it might make more sense. This is the one I just added, right? Here's where maybe either we want to shell before the mirror or I need to come in here and like select, I can select these back faces so that it's actually open to the inside. And I can actually change this, this cut depth. This is somewhat, yeah, this is somewhat not realistic. Really, the better way to do it, it would take a bit of time, but it's to select all of these faces. Just for, for the mold molding aspect of this product. It's a bit more realistic if it's just a hole. So sometimes like the placement of the shell is something to consider. It's, uh, or rather like the order of of the vents, so maybe it makes sense to cut vents after the shell, which would put it after the mirror. And so you'd have to either do a mirror feature command or do it on both sides. So these are some like edits that I expect may need to be made here. Um, so I'm gonna exit isolate. I'm gonna isolate this bottom one now. And this one, I'm simply just gonna shell on the top face here. exit isolate. Now we can go back to the assembly and see what updates and just click yes. It's asking about the updates. Here I'm just going to exit edit, editing the part. So here we can see now we have a hollow body for our components. Um, I can again take a front view here and let's see if I can select the motor and just move this down. The blade position would probably be like somewhere here, right at the very base of the picture. Now it would make sense to come in here. This is again where it makes sense to me to edit the part within the assembly. So I'm going to click on here and say edit part. And we're like on this, I might like hide the picture. I can do that from the solid bodies. Hide this. And I can create a sketch on this face. So I select that face, Alt S for sketch, O for circle, click on this. And then this I can like go to my features and extrude cut to make space through this body, right? I'm, I only want to cut this top part. And this is to add realism so that we can see it's like, okay, the um, give room for, for this blade to spin. Now, actually, I'm realizing that this whole blade assembly has this um, cup down here. So really, this circle, this, this cut would have to be bigger. And we can talk about this realism together in class or individually. Do the best you can. Um, you know, we're looking for something believable. We're not, we're definitely not engineers. I mean, the more level of realism you can go to, the more you can study those like reference models and, and use them as a, as a source 
of inspiration, the, the more believable your file will be. So now I can, let me hide this, and now I can work on this part. And again, I can create a sketch on these faces because they're flat. If they were curved, it wouldn't let me. So again, I select this bottom face and I clicked on Alt S. I can now press O for circle. And now this one, this blade assembly would be trapped within the picture. So here I can create this cut. And on this face here, well, I can yeah convert entities to copy this outer edge. I might do like a thin extrude. I'm going to check the thin feature. Again, this is based on my studying of, of the other objects of the initial blender. We only want this to come down like maybe 0.4 inches. So this is how it seats within the pocket. I do want to merge the result, but only with the picture. And then again on this face, maybe creating a new sketch on this face. Um, maybe there's like a cylinder here that sort of protects this, like um, the blade shaft. Right, so it's all about just sort of adding some of these elements. I, I hope it's not too many changes, but really the main thing is the proportion and the shelling. Some of these things can come later, but I would definitely encourage keeping up with things as, as they happen. We can look here and see what the error is. It's just to this fillet, so I can edit the feature. I see it's missing it up here. That's right. I need to adjust this handle. So I'm going to um, move away from this. I'm going to take a front view, and now I forget whether I have this handle fixed or not. It is fixed, so I can look at the mates. I'm not sure what's holding it in place. It must be this one. Oh, it's because I'm not in the assembly. So this is, I apologize if this is confusing. This is kind of representing your part file. It's actually an assembly within an assembly. So what I actually need to do would be to open up the sub assembly, which I believe is called Blender. Nope. And it is within this one that I need to drag this handle down. And again, if anything, this is an illustration of like why it's important, like why the origin is important. If if I had my origin placed at the base of this picture, this jump wouldn't have happened. And what I'm simply going to do, I'm just going to suppress this. This was from the last demo. So again, this means it, this is this is the challenge of assemblies. Assemblies are great, but now there's a lot of jumping between like other assemblies and part files, which is why in this method, I tend to prefer work like designing on the left side of this, this branch, not the right side. Um, there is a bit of a necessity here because we are reusing our assembly from project three. So I'm simply just going to suppress these and then that suppresses the error here. So now it's all, it's all kind of fixed, <laughs> so to speak, um, as a workaround. But yeah, now we can come back here, update, let the things update. Um, if there's hidden bodies, it's within, it's just simply this one here. And there we have it, um, a blender with um, components. And you can see there's some issues, like my um, picture is not fitting in the pocket. So again, all these things, right, like paying attention to the details. I don't know if you can all see that. I'll I'll point it out here. It's this is not sitting in the pocket. So my fix to this is going to be to edit the sketch. Turn this to be for construction and simply just say offset entities and push it in a bit. Exit the sketch and hope we don't have errors. Nice. And now I see it sitting within the pocket. Um, you know, other updates would pro would probably be to this um, this cut circle. You can see when I created the ring to protect the blade shaft, it's too wide, so I can edit this and just make this bigger. 
and then there are now it fits. Um, all right, I hope that all makes sense. Um, but that is the path I'd follow. The final couple final things that I would do. Um, so like I said, this would be the setup, save this assembly. This can this will be one of the uh, CAD requirements for project four to be turned in. I would, once you have that saved, I would suppress this. And now here's my component setup. It's quite simple. Um, you know, the one thing to consider is the placement of the planes. So like I said, to me, it made sense to like have the top plane at the base of the picture. So one thing that could be done, we already saved the assembly. Here I can right click on this and make it visible. And we can mate this. Well, firstly, actually, I want to mate this height distance relationship. So I'm going to mate this to this, but I'm going to click on, oh, that's weird. I don't know why it's not giving me distance. So I'm going to undo that. Let's see, can I mate? All right, hmm, that's weird. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Um, basically what I would want to make is this to this surface. And then I'm going to save this as a part file. So file save as, rebuild and save the document. And this is where it's confusing, you want to drop drop this or you know pop this open and look for part um, and now here I can say like uh, blender parts click OK and now when I go to open what I just created there are the blender parts this is what I mean by dumb bodies. You can say no if the feature recognition pops up. And basically, now I would I can start designing a new blender within here, right? Maybe here's the base. This is just a rough representation of a master sketch. I can start to create half of my picture on here, so on and so forth. And, and again, this is helpful because now I can see the components and, and there's not this like, are you in part editing world or assembly editing world? Um, and and then moving down this path is, is what I would recommend moving forward. So that way, kind of the first appliance is following this path. The next two appliances are following this path. You can try both and see what you like and get a, a feeling for, um, for both options. Now, one of the other requirements for project four is uh, sketching over components. So just as a recap, it's helpful to create a drawing of this, simply just a 2D drawing. You can sketch elevation views for your designs. So go to File. To create a drawing, you go to File and New. You can load this drawing template and click on OK. Here you can type in, I, would, I do custom sheet size, type in the sheet size you want to sketch on. So for example, 11 inches by 8.5 inches. If you forget to type in inches, it'll default to millimeters and you have a very small sheet and everything will look really big and be confusing. And here I can just drop in the blender parts. I really just want a front view line work. Um, and for me, typically like, you know, you can play with the size here if you want it to be bigger. Um, but I guess leave enough room to sketch the blender. So that may even be too big. You can always type in a custom number here. So uh, go to, I think you can simply just type it in. Yeah. And then you can uh, save this out as a JPEG and then just copy the image, you know, create, create a row of, of images, um, you know, in, in whatever drawing program, Photoshop, what have you. But here you can save it out as a JPEG. Um, and this can be your source for, for sketching. And again, it can just be 2D sketches over the components considering the placement and spacing. All right, I hope that helps.